And this shows how the peak developed. In 1928, 1920, there was no increase across the first five years of age. And you can see the peak developed, you know. So 1960, it's a whole lot higher than it was down in 1920. It's, Sub-Saharan Africa still looks like the 1920 line. What's really interesting is if you, if you, if you quantify it, if you had a 10% increase in residential electrification, you got a 24% increase in leukemia mortality, which is big. And, and uh, like Mississippi had 20% of houses electrified in 1940. Now they're 100%, so that meant that they had uh, they had a 200% leukemia increase. Uh, look, if anybody, I got all this stuff in electronic copy. I could just email you uh, a PDF of all this. This is nice, short, clean paper. And this is what you see now in SERB data. This is current data. And if you look at the, the kids who die under age two, whoops, what happened? If you, if you look at the kids who die under age, age one, they don't show any association with electric fields. With a with electrification. Okay. <clears throat> when I finished the childhood leukemia study, I, I just had to look at some of the adult cancers, and and this is in the late 90s. I noticed that female breast cancer had a 80 percent correlation with residential electrification, but I just couldn't believe it because epidemiology, the power frequency. Uh, data that we've been looking at that I contributed to starting in the 80s wasn't that strong. The risk ratios were never that high. Observed to expected were two, three, four. With a couple exceptions, there was a Canadian utility study where they got an odds ratio of 15, but they were looking at pulse to RF. They weren't looking at 60 cycles. They were looking at high frequency stuff. But then with this change, when I, I moved to California in, in 2004 and bought a condo in Indio, and this article turned up in a newspaper, and it really affected my life for four years. This was published in 2004, February. In 2003, the teachers at Laquita Middle School, that's just three grades, the kids were like 10, 11, and 12. Uh, one, of the, one of the teachers, Gail Coleman, diagnosed with breast cancer, and she, she, she knew other cancers in the school. And the teachers, they're bright people. They, uh, they knew teachers in the other schools, and this was the only school in the whole district that they knew had more than two, ca two cases of cancer. They had 11. So they, they, uh, they bitched to the superintendent of schools, uh, Doris Wilson. She a, was a hard case. She, she, she retired, thank God. But the, her substitute is no better. And so they, they trucked in this, a, a guy named, uh, hmm, it's funny. Something's going off of this. Uh, uh, a guy named John Morgan from the, the local tumor registry. And he said, it appears that the teacher's cancer rates were not abnormally high. I don't know how he came up with that. Because, I mean, I've seen, the, there's a video of this, of his hour and a half with these people, and with these teachers, and he said that 20 times. You don't have an excess of cancer? There's no cancer cluster here? He didn't, he didn't talk to any of them, didn't do any study. He was just pulling this out of his hat. Liar. And uh, so I, I called the reporter. I don't know where he is now. I wish I could find him. I'd thank him for this. And uh, here's my phone number. If the teachers are interested, I'll help them. I've done a hundred of these cancer clusters. and I didn't know how hard it was going to be. Oh, there, there's the, his quote. It appears that the teacher's cancer rates were not abnormally high. Well, he's full of beans. It was turned out, well, it had, they, had, they had 11 teachers with cancer, had ages, diagnosis, and names. The one thing it didn't have is how big the school was. It's a huge school, so what? 11's no big deal. I got on the internet in 30 seconds to find out it was a tiny school, 30 teachers in 2004. It turns out that only 130 had ever worked there since it was built in, in 1990. And I think they're up to 18 now and, and 16 teachers. There are a couple of double headers, teachers with two cancers. So uh, I, I, found, I found out from the, I said, who should I talk to at the school? So I wrote a letter to Charlene Whitlinger, assistant superintendent. I didn't, I called her on the phone and she was really bad. She said, uh, she says, there's no problem at the school. Put it in writing if you want to do a study. So I put it in writing, 
got no response for months. This happened in March. It got down to the end of April. We're time to drive back to New York, to Washington State. And uh, so one day I called her secretary, whoever answered the phone, says, Dr. Mel Hampshire, they're never going to answer you. So I wrote her boss that day on email, and I got this response. Thanks for your offer. Our investigation and findings are satisfactory. No investigation, no findings. So uh, I went home up north. And that summer, I told the teachers, look, if you want to do something, the school's not going to help us. You're going to have to do it. So go back through your school yearbooks and try to configure the population. I want to know how old everybody was, how long they worked there, you know, when they came, when they left. You have to know that to do the study. So they did that. They spent the whole summer, and they put together the cohort. <clears throat> so and back next winter, Gail invited us in the school, into the school. I, Lloyd Morgan came with me, drove down from the Bay Area, and stayed with me. We had, had the test equipment, and we, and we had really very high levels of dirty electricity. Uh, we could we'll do a little show and tell afterwards. I'll, sh I got ha I'll show you the meter we used. But every place we plugged it in, it was above 2,000, just about 2,000 units were like 40. And uh, we do, did find one or two rooms that had net current problems, which I won't get into. So I reported this to the, by letter to the superintendent of schools. And a couple days later, I get this certified letter from their attorney saying that I'd violated state law, I trespassed, and they threatened me with arrest if I ever set foot in a place under the Homeland Security Act. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an Arab terrorist. Well, I'm Arab. <laughs> Maybe I am a terrorist. <laughs> they hired a contractor, went into the school, and uh, they found exactly the same stuff we found. I had a stroke of genius. I had the teachers file a Cal OSHA complaint. Every one of them signed it. And it sucked the health department in reluctantly because they weren't going to do anything. I went to OSHA. I went to NIOSH. Nobody cared. Nobody wanted to help. But uh, as a result of this, Neutra, who was a, I'd known him for 25 years, came down and he used that meter and measured every outlet in the school. Thank God. And he measured magnetic fields at the same time. There's the school. The arrows go to every one of the rooms that pegged the meter. When, I, when I, we first got this data, I got big maps that show the, the current level, the dirty power levels in each of the rooms. And I knew the teachers by name. I knew who had, had cancer. I knew their names. When I first saw the data sets together, I, I said to Lloyd, I said, hey, Lloyd, this is all the hot rooms are the cancer rooms. And they were. I was really surprised. I mean, this just. Just couldn't believe it because the odds ratios are really high. We got the expected cancer rates from published California data. We did a standard cohort study. I don't have to tell you about that. Oh, but wait a second. This, this saved our butt right here. One of the teachers had saved the annual classroom assignment rosters. Every fall when the teachers show up, they'd say, Jane Doe, room 205. So she had those from 1990 forward. Because we were challenged by the cancer registry by the school saying that some of these people weren't teachers or that they got their cancer before they worked at the school. Uh-huh. We had prima facie evidence of who was there when they were there, thanks to that woman saving that, that stuff. Let's, well, this basically, whoops. Melanoma was 11 times higher. They had 4-4, only 0.36 expected. Thyroid, uterine cancer, and polycythemia vera were off scale. You know, we actually did this, this stuff, usually do it with a big computer program called OCMAP or one of the other software programs. We actually did this by hand with spreadsheets. But I knew it might come to litigation, so I sent it to my, the data to my friends at University of Pittsburgh. They ran it through a, a computer software program and got exactly what we got, so I was really tickled with that. First person in history who's ever done one of these by hand. So the teachers were right, they do have cancer. But, uh, but there's a lot of politics I could get into. The school district got a state senator and their attorneys. They f flew up to Sacramento, talked to Neutra's bosses. He had to make a final report on this. He, he agreed that the cancers were high, the dirty electricity was high, but he couldn't bring himself to say there was a connection. So the school district read this as a complete whitewash. So today, the teachers are still getting exposed.